We are back on Inside Politics. Our guest, our guest today is Mayor is Greg Ballard. He's the former mayor of Indianapolis, Indiana. He's a former he's a retired Marine Lieutenant Colonel. And he's written a book called uh, Less Oil or More Caskets: The National Security Argument for Moving Away from Oil. Uh, mayor, uh, the another part of the questions that you raise uh, in the book is that every time we fill up our cars, we may not know it, but we're actually funding terrorism. Well, it's been well known for quite a while that terrorism is funded primarily by the sale of oil. Yeah, ISIS, obviously, at one time was, um, had over $2 billion in cash. When they started out, they were, they were funded primarily by the black market sale of oil. Iran, which is a, the largest state sponsor of terrorism in the world, our U.S. State Department has designated them a state sponsor of terrorism since 1984. Um, they, 60% of their government revenue comes from the sale of oil. Al-Qaeda got their money primarily from, from kind of a diverted network of donations, primarily funded originally by oil. That's, who, that's how terrorists are funded, is through the sale of oil. And we've known this for quite a while, and we have just had to accept that because there was no alternative. But the truth is, when we do fill up our cars, we are, a lot, a lot of that money is going to Asia. But you have to also have to understand that two-thirds of the oil from the Middle East is sold to Asia, not to the United States. But I thought our dependence on foreign oil had gone down quite a bit. I thought we were the number one producer of that to some degree. So what, that's, how come everybody knows this in the military? And in these other groups, but it hasn't. The public doesn't know it, and there doesn't appear to be any policy recognition of it. Anything that we're doing. That's a that's a really great point, because because so much of what we're being told. Again, I'm not big in a conspiracy, but people say things uh, to try to put the best spin on it. But I'll give you a perfect example: oil embargoes in the 1970s. But that's but when that's cars got 10 miles to the gallon. We, we, we have a little bit better fuel efficiency. No, but now. it's it's the point. That's not the point. The point is that oil embargoes. In the 1970s, we were 28% dependent. And we went through two of those oil embargoes, Nixon and, and uh, Carter. Carter. Then we went through Beirut, Lebanon, the bombing of the Marine Barracks. We went through all these terrorist incidents. We went through the Gulf War of 90, 91. We went through 9 11. We went through all of that. And from, from the 70s to 2006, our dependence on foreign oil went from 28% to 60%. Despite all of that, despite all the federal rhetoric, despite all the office holders running for office saying, hey, we have to do this. I've got presidential statements in the book saying all of this, and we actually went from 28% to 60%. We are still at 20% right now. We are producing more, but that doesn't change anything. If we're producing more, and that's really changing the world, why are our troops still in the Middle East protecting oil? Well, President Trump's talking about taking troops out of Syria and also out of Afghanistan. Is that, does he recognize this? He says it's all about America first. Those, he doesn't sound like he's talking your kind of stuff. Those are not the troops protecting the flow of oil. Where are those the are troops? Tro there? The, the troops are in the Gulf. They're around the Gulf. They're protecting facilities, and they're, and they're protecting the flow of that oil. Those are not those troops. These are additional troops that, again, $81 billion in 2017 is what this cost us. This has cost us tens of billions of dollars for decades now just to protect the flow of oil around the world. Would-be presidential candidates often write books before they get into the race or as they're getting into a race? Or lots of people are running in 2020, particularly in the Democratic Party. You're a Republican. Are you running in 2020? I am not running. <laughs> Believe it or not, that's the second time I've been asked that question this week because of the timing of the book. But what no, about a third party? No, right? no. You don't, you don't, if you don't want to take on President Trump, why, <laughs> no. if you're not going to talk no. about this issue, I don't hear anybody, any of the other presidential candidates mm. getting in. If they don't talk about this issue, then what you're doing in the book is not going to go anywhere. Uh, that may be true, and I'm hoping that to get to the, to the level where people are talking about this issue because this actually has been happening for a long time now and I'm not mad about it I'm not mad at oil companies I'm not mad at anything other than the fact that we have an alternative kind of staring us in the face 70% of the world's oil is used for transportation we have to really look at that and what that means uh, because of all that oil that comes out of the Middle East and we we protect that that oil funds terrorism. That oil gives Russia and OPEC enormous strategic leverage over the rest of the world. And our, our producing oil from Texas changes none of that. Vice President Mike Pence is a fellow Hoosier. He is. I and know also a Republican. Have you talked to him about this? These are some of the issues that he ought to be mm. interested in. Has he mm. showed any interest in it? Have you given him a copy of your book? I have not given him a copy of the book yet. The book just came out last month, so no, I have not done that yet. I'm hoping to put one in his hand. Uh, I, I have had a talk in D.C. and Senator Luger, former senator from Indiana, well-respected senator, introduced me because he understands this topic really well also. Like I say, a lot of people in D.C. know this is going on, particularly those who are retired and they're willing to, to say something about it. General Conway, a former commandant of the Marine Corps, 
recently came out during, when he was being interviewed, he asked, actually kind of asked the question back, why are we protecting the oil that goes from Iran to China? Now you say That's other countries. Are, you say other countries around the world are taking the steps that you want us to take. What are the, who are the, who are these other countries, and what are they doing? Well, China, India, Britain, France, Norway, Germany, and others have said they are going to ban the sale of internal combustion engine cars in the near future, either in 2030 or 2040. They're moving in that direction. They're actually they're actually moving very robustly in that direction. We are not really necessarily moving in that direction. California actually is. Over 5% of the cars in California right now are these types of cars. Uh, Plug-in hybrids are, are all electric cars. Are we going to have to set hard limits for when we're going to quit selling cars as we know them today? It's not going to be done in five years? Or, or, the, or the car company is going to do that on their own? Well, that's a, good, that's a great question you know, because we do have cafe standards that the federal government sets right now. I, the Trump I, administration is trying to roll back. I understand that. I, I'd rather this be a voluntary conversion and people kind of see this for that reason. That's the reason I wrote the book, so, so people know that there's... Here's this what this is what's happening right now, because like like you said, people think we're in Syria and Afghanistan doing this, this, and this. But there's this whole other set of troops over there that are protecting the flow of oil for everybody, and it's cost us enormously over the years. Greg Bowers, the former mayor of Indianapolis, Indiana, he's also a retired lieutenant colonel in the Marine Corps. He's also written a book called Less Oil or More Caskets: The National Security Argument for Moving Away from Oil. Back to continue our conversation after you watch these messages.